Welcome back. So today we're going to go ahead and begin a, a new chapter. In this chapter, I will envelop the basics of arrays. So that's one of the concepts which I have introduced in the previous chapter. Just briefly, I've mentioned it. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what arrays really are because you will be dealing a lot with them and you will need them for a lot of things, believe me. Anyway, so as we introduce uh, arrays in C++, let's go ahead and say what they actually are. So arrays, by definition, are basically data structures that contain a number of easily accessible elements of the same type. Now here we talk about we will talk about one-dimensional arrays, but we will cover advanced part in later tutorials. So uh, the concept is the I basically to have all these elements stored in a sequence of some sort and then be able to access them by ref by some sort of a reference. So very often we are required to group a number of variables of the same type into one logical unit. So for example, like student grades, uh, cars, some numbers that represent some parameters, etc. So if you had student grades, you would need them all to be in one logical unit, which an array can actually provide you with. So arrays are basically homogeneous data structures because all elements are of the same type. So let's go ahead and dive into the very first section here. So let's just go ahead and uh, new, yes, uh, project, console application, go, really should click skip, uh, arrays. Okay, next, finish. So let's have, actually, now this this is becoming somewhat useful. I'm gonna remove this and this. Anyway, uh, in declaring an array, you would require a following syntax. I'm sure that it's relatively familiar to you. You require to define a type and then you need an uh, array name and after the array name you would need a size so size is a relative term as it doesn't necessarily need to be defined here you can simply initialize an array to a certain amount of elements and that is going to define the size as well so what we want to do is this was pseudocode so let's just go ahead and clear an array so this is just a declaration of an array. This is without the initialization. ARR1, -A -R -R let's call it like that. This, the size of this array will be 10. So it has the potential to contain, to store 10 elements. None of these elements for the time being are initialized. So uh, let's, I can do this as well, float ARR, do let's go ahead and initial let's go ahead and give this one a size of three. So this is not initialization. We're just defining how many elements does array need to contain. And for this basic part, let's take it that an array does need a defined size prior to its prior to its usage. So you need to define the size of the array. There are ways of not defining well pff, harsh word. There are ways of not putting a fixed number here and actually have an array that has that is kind of that is dynamic so but this will this will be done later on in the advanced parts because we're going to need pointers and trust me at a certain point of time you will need arrays that whose sizes are not fixed whose sizes can uh change and alter so you can basically store in theory an infinite amount of elements Anyway, so something scalable, let's put it like that. But that's all for later parts. For the time being, uh, just take it that arrays do need to have fixed sizes. And that's how they're usually used in the very beginning of things. And later on as well, people tend to put fixed sizes as well. So each element of an array can be accessed via a particular index. But we have to be careful since the indexing in arrays I remember mentioning this somewhere along the merry way that indexing in arrays starts from 
a zero. So the first element is not indexed with one, it is indexed with a zero. So if you will go ahead and do initialization to demonstrate this, so let's go ahead and do it like this, ARR1, element zero shall be five. So this is the first element of the array. You can also, you don't need to initialize them in any particular order. You can initialize them in any order you like. So ARR1, again, at element four, element at position four, at index four, sorry, not element four, element at index four, shall be equal, I don't know, to 10, let's say. And element at position, at element at position nine, shall be equal to 100, let's put it like that. So this is basically the last element. Why? Well, because indexing begins at zero. So let's count. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 numbers. So the size of the array is indeed 10. Anyway, it is also important to mention that the compiler won't warn us, nor it can, if we access memory locations that are outside the range of our array. So these locations are called pits, basically, and they are not easily detected because the program can run out in eight out of 10 cases, basically. Because the program can run in eight out of 10 cases, sorry and in other two, it doesn't actually run. What do I mean by this? Well, if you have an array one and it has a size of 10, and if you try to access like the, the 50th element of this array, which basically is outside the bounds of this array, uh, the program, as I said, uh, out of, it's going to run in eight cases out of 10. And it's not going to warn us and it's going to be a problem because it's going to read something from a memory location and it could read some sensitive information. That's how, uh, that's how the overflows occur. And it could also just read some random junk, which could cause a lot of confusion in our logic because C++ in and of itself does not do boundary checking. So you, this is this is a case in Java. So you won't be able to achieve this in Java, but uh, rel take, Take everything that I say with a grain of salt, but as I said, this is not the case in C++. That's that's one of the beauties of the C++ language because it allows you to do whatever it is that you want to do. There are no restrictions, restraints, or of whatsoever. So let me just give you an example that is out of range. So let's take the float R A R R two, whose size is three. So zero, one, two. That's it. And if we say that. ARR2, and we are trying to initialize like element with index 3. 11. So ARR2 has three elements. The last one is basically this would be the last element. This would be the last element because it goes like this 0, 1, 2. But we are trying to initialize the third element to 11. The program can run correctly, but it is ill-formed program and it, it's bound to cause some, some problems because you do not know what's at that memory location. You could be overwriting something that is important to the functioning of your other programs or of the system in general. So that can be a problem because it, something could be located in that memory location where you are putting this number that's basically important to your to the, fun to the proper functioning of your machine. And you're basically deleting that and putting number 11 there. So when the machine needs to access those res resources, it goes there, oh, I have a number 11 here. And it's supposed to be my pointer for a printer or something like that. Anyway, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, just, be, just be aware of those things. Do not, this is like the very wrong way of doing things. And if you're reading from these locations outside the balance of the array, this is, that would also be a very wrong way of going about things. So anyway, uh, we're going to cut it here and we're going to go ahead and begin the next tutorial where I'll talk a little bit more about the memory represent representation. It's going to be a fairly short one, just something that I really need to demonstrate to you.